There were many fine ideas held by the guru, Osho. However, there were many elements to his movement, to his organization, which were far from benign. The Rajneesh movement is the movement which continues the spiritual legacy of Osho. Osho himself supposedly became enlightened at the age of 23. He studied philosophy and received his masters. He continued his work and became a speaker all over India speaking about different elements of society, speaking about socialism and indeed his opposition to socialism. He criticised Gandhiism, communism and a multitude of other beliefs, including organised religion. He did not see why people had to bow their head to these organised religious officials. Although strangely, in his own movement, in his own belief, he asked people to give up their material goods and their materialism, to turn from things which distract them from the spiritual towards things which are truly spiritual, truly developmental. However, he was the man who had multiple Rolls Royces, indeed over 90 Rolls Royces. He was the man who was treated as quite literally a god on earth, although personally and in his philosophy he opposed the idea of God. The way in which Osho claimed to be enlightened placed himself at the centre of his movement where his teachings were seen as being the absolute truth. He made himself a moral, social, political centre with an absolute enlightened philosophy. Clearly, Osho was a cult leader. Many of the critics of Osho are not in fact critics of his work. They're critics of a system which does not fit their philosophy. Don't mind too much about the spirituality per se, that's personal liberty, personal choice to follow a spiritual path. I consider the control, the belief, domination, the cultic mentality within the Osho belief, the Rajneesh movement, to simply be at least as controlling as any other spirituality, spiritual or religious path or system. I don't personally find Osho to be a cult leader just because I don't agree with him on everything. It's because of the methods and ideas within the movement, with him during his life and with the movement from then to now. There are several elements of the Rajneesh movement which are cultic. No doubt in my mind they are ritualised cultic elements. People would come to the movement to learn, to grow spiritually, to learn who they are, how to live life in a better way. Like in any other belief, any other religion or spirituality or group, they would come in contact with beliefs and ideas. Being a searcher, they already want those ideas. They want certain elements in their life. They find these supposed truths surrounded by people who believe and they're impressionable because they're searching and naturally they incorporate those ideas through meditation, a semi-hypnotic state, you embed those ideas even more so into your conscious. 
in a group, a religion, or in this case, what could be described as a cult, brainwashing is quite simple. The process of indoctrination. As I say, you go into the movement, you're a seeker, you're a searcher, you initiate the process, you incorporate the belief. The rest continues as you continue to invest your time and effort. And if they're investing time and effort in you, all the better and all the easier to coerce you to believe more and more devoutly. Okay, now let's go a bit off the edge. Some more peculiarity. When you become initiated, become a full member of the group, when you've given your life to spirituality completely, you get a new name, a new designation as a person who's spiritually reborn. The members of the group, the cult, are encouraged to go through different therapies, including frenzied meditation as a form of dance, where you work yourself up into a frenzy and basically exhaust yourself, preventing you from thinking clearly, thinking outside of the group. And also because you're surrounded by people in the group, you're surrounded by the group, the belief, there's no chance of you finding dissent. Also, to add to the meditation, being surrounded by believers and this frenzied meditation, you also have sex therapy, where basically you can have lots of sex, which is a brilliant thing. But even so, it's used as a tool to ensure you remain part of the organisation. The idea in the cult of Osho for the members of the movement is to have a state of emptiness, to try and reach enlightenment, to clear the mind, to stop the mind, to remove your past, you have no past, to not consider the future, there is no future, there is only the now, to remove attachment and materialism, to remove mind and thought, ego, personality, until there is no self, there is no you, and your name is replaced, and you're given the title, if you're a man, Swami, if you're a woman, Ma, and you'd be given another name as your spiritual name, your title and your name as part of the Rajneesh commune. He lived in luxury. He lived a great lifestyle, whereas the followers, the followers of Osho lived in, well, a simple system of living. No want, no desire, simply expression and thoughtlessness being reverted very often to the simplistic attitude of a child, obeying your parent, the spiritual parent, being Osho. Oh 